Hi Lisa, thanks for joining me. So um, let's start off by just telling me a bit about your journey as an e-patient, please. Hi. As you know, but the listeners don't yet, I have multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis. And that journey started over 11 years ago when I went temporarily blind with early MS, although I wasn't diagnosed at the time, and immediately wanted to look for information. And that's where it got started, wanting to be an educated um, person living with a possible disease. Fast forward to 2005, I was finally diagnosed with MS, and then 18 months later with RA, and after that started a blog and became recognized as an e-patient online, being electronic and helping other people become empowered. I was sharing information, things that I had learned, and um, just really helping to help other people know how to navigate their health system and take charge myself and um, that's kind of how it got started. And for you personally what were the biggest challenges that you faced in actually getting the right treatment? Now my doctor, my neurologist, prescribed a medication when I was first diagnosed with MS. That's what most new patients get is they leave the appointment with the prescription. I learned very quickly that my insurance company didn't cover the medication and I was left to find a way to pay for it. Well, the drug company did refer me to a nonprofit who would help, but I didn't qualify for full assistance. And that was a huge struggle um, because I earned just slightly too much, um, even though I earned much less than other people in the area, like a third of the median income in Washington, D.C. And that was a huge struggle trying to get gain access to that medication that I needed as a new patient. When it's most effective is to use it early. Um, that's what studies show. And so that was a little difficult at the time. It was very stressful. And given that our audience on Pharma Forum is mainly those within the pharma industry, although we, we hope a broader audience obviously watches these, do you think there are things that pharma itself can do to better facilitate access to medicines for patients like yourself? Well, I think first off, they can be much more generous and transparent with their program requirements because that will help set up expectations. So really, truly fund the nonprofits that do provide the assistance. It can be frustrating when a patient is referred to a program and then is told, I'm sorry, we've run out of funds. Even if they might qualify, um, that shouldn't happen. You know, if they qualify for assistance, there should be assistance there. And um, sometimes taking charge, the drug companies, rather than refer to a program that's off-site, that they have no control over, maybe in-house take care of that so that there is more connect and more responsibility between the company and helping the patients. And then on the other side, it would be nice if they publicize how they help people. Because um, that's good to know. I'd love to hear how many millions of dollars of medication is given away free to patients in need each year. You know, it shouldn't be a huge secret. I think it would be good PR. Advertise the programs. You know, definitely get the word out there at every point of contact with the patients or the doctors or the nurses. And make sure there's easy information where you know where to go for contact and that you can actually reach a real person. And in the U.S., be sure to have special um, consideration for patients who are underinsured that have some insurance coverage but not quite enough because they get caught in a hole and aren't, you know, picked up by the safety net. And that is a problem here in the United States that hopefully will change um, in the future but it's something that's still going on now. I have a lot of patients who tell me they've applied, but they were denied, even though they're on Social Security or, you know, they have no income or something, you know, that there's a barrier in the way. Um, those are a couple of things that just come to mind immediately, you know, when I get talking. <laughs> sure. And it sounds like from what you're saying there that there's a, there's a real challenge with, I guess a whole group of patients who haven't got the right level of insurance, 
but I guess they're earning just a little bit too much for quali- to qualify for support, which is where Farmer could potentially look a little bit more in detail. Yes, I think it can be frustrating too, because um, patients with these diseases, you know, MS or RA, um, they're debilitating. They probably can't work as long. And they're not going to have as much money in savings. And sometimes what they do have in savings um, keeps them from qualifying for assistance. So I think it needs to be more than just numbers. You know, I was debt free when I first applied for assistance. And that held me back because I was a responsible person that wasn't carrying huge, you know, loans or mortgages or anything. Um, but I'm going to need my retirement money, you know, rather than paying it for medication now. So, yes, I think they need to take a closer look at the entire situation, not just that one little aspect. Now, just to move on, you said at the start of the discussion that you obviously did a lot of your own uh, research around the disease. So what's been your experience with what I describe as a social web when it comes to finding useful information? Well, my case has been great. I have found information on websites. There are lots of pharmaceutical companies are setting up wonderful websites giving information, basic information about the diseases and what their little niche is. That's wonderful. I found a lot of information and help from forums where other patients helped guide me when I was new. And I hope that I'm doing the same thing. My blog is Brass and Ivory, Life with MS and RA, and a lot of patients come and read what I write, and I have a carnival of MS bloggers to help develop a community, and really it's a support system in a way that's not structured by any other entity away from it. It's sort of, you know, homegrown, and I write at Health Central and um, help to create community there, participate on Facebook. And what I can find is not just patient information, but actually scientific information as well. It's, it's wonderful what the social web has um, put on your doorstep, what you can really gain access to immediately. You know, throw something out into the Internet and people come up with responses. And it's just really changed, I think, the way people deal with their disease and the way they manage it. And many of these initiatives, I guess, are run by individuals like yourself who are just sort of giving their time for free, helping other sort of patients out there. But how active have you seen Pharma in this space? You know, to be honest, I have not seen Pharma much in the actual blogs, in participating on that level, you know, in the forums. I know that they're reading and I know that they're watching because care companies have contacted me to ask what can we do better to help other patients. You know, we, we want to know where they're watching, they're listening. Um, they're not yet producing so much. However, there was a project that I was involved in that um, looked like a group blog. A pharma company put together a website where five of us bloggers who already existed created videos and written pieces and um, it looked like a blog, and it sort of interacted that way. However, there weren't comments, but readers found me and sent me emails. So I know it was helpful. It was a step in the right direction. I personally think pharma can go further and be a little bit more brave. You know, I know some are pulling out of Facebook because they're, you know, they have to have comments now. You know, Facebook rules have changed. Um, and I've seen a few successful projects on Facebook, not so much in the fields of MS or RA. You know, those diseases, they've started going there, but not all the way. And I guess, you know, one of the challenges for pharma is the whole PR issue as well as the regulations. But there's perhaps a lack of understanding there. So in your experience, how well do you think patients really understand the way that pharma operates and how they're developing their medicines? Well, I think there probably is very little understanding. You know, we know that companies are making the medications. They make the medications, they want to sell the medications. It seems to be a lot about money and profits and trying to get as many patients as possible, taking your 
product. But there are other things that pharma is doing that help the patients overall. I know the program that I was referred to when I was new was, okay, it was a compliance program for the company. You know, they wanted to make sure that new patients stayed on their medication, everything was going okay. You know, honestly, that's what it was. However, I had access to a nurse that I talked to. You know, I could ask questions and offer feedback and was given tools. And they also offer um, webinars and in-person programs and really kind of help a person deal with this new diagnosis. And I think patients don't consider that as part of what they offer. Um, you almost assume it in a way that it's just there. And, you know, maybe if those programs were a little bit broader rather than just focused to patients on their products, it might help there be a more understanding that pharma really is trying to develop things that are supportive. And it's nice to know that there's research going on. And it's good when PR comes out that there's a new study that has such endpoints that they met. Um, but most of the time you find that in the financial publications <laughs> rather than in the patient publications. So there's a separation. I think it could be interconnected much better. So the understanding of patients, of what there is, could be improved, I think. So we know that some pharma companies are trying to do some newer initiatives and, and get that communication right. So based on what you've seen, what stands out as, as the better initiatives from the pharma side? Well, I do like some of the non-branded sponsored initiatives like the one I was part of, the videos. That was a website called How I Fight MS. And I think it was nice to hear um, how patients were dealing with different aspects of their disease in a real life situation, just like this. I turned on the camera and I talked about something. And they put it up. And it wasn't edited. It was just very, very real. And I know it was helpful because of the emails that came in. Um, I know there's another company that has a website that's offering a lot of information about um, exercise and diet and yoga and, you know, mental health type programs and, you know, things that get closer to counseling and things that just are so far away from, you know, taking this pill or giving yourself this injection. And I think that's a move in the right way. There's one that comes to mind that I particularly like is um, MS Active Source, and the company that sponsors it has several different um, products in um, research going on right now for MS and ones that are on the market. And so it's not focused on one thing. It is broader and focused on more patients. And you don't have to take the product to um, benefit from it, which is kind of nice. That, that's a good thing. So it's really about moving away from just talking about drugs and talking about more holistic disease management, which is beneficial to the patient. Right. We are so much more than chemicals, you know, in our bodies. There, there's other aspects like the financial aspect of living with the disease, the social aspects of how you interact within your network and your family at work or your friends and how to deal with other aspects of just living life things that everybody has to deal with, you know, just moving through life. It's just you happen to have this one little glitch in the way that can create some problems. And looking at people in their entire being, you know, what they might need at every step of the way. And I'm sure you've learned a tremendous amount, uh, Lisa, on your journey as an e-patient. I'm sure you still continue to learn a lot. So, What's your key advice that you'd give, I guess, to, to new patients, newly diagnosed patients, but also to pharma? You know, one thing that I tell newly diagnosed patients is right up front, start, take charge of what um, you need in your health. Take notes, bring information to your doctor, ask questions, get answers, you know, get information and really become educated and take charge. And something for pharma, I think, would be to um, just be more open and transparent and get information out there 
and be less about marketing and be more about supporting. Well, on that note, I'll say thank you very much for your time. It's been uh, great to hear your insights. Thanks very much. Thanks, Paul. PharmaForum.com is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.